I don't know if you know anything about Roman baths. I'll touch on that a bit. So I, I didn't set out in this uh, project with a clear theoretical strategy or agenda per se, but I think it very, emerge, it, it very much emerges out of my background as a student in the early noughties, as well as my more recent entanglement with new materialist approaches, which I explored through my PhD, as well as my engagement with reflective field work practices. This is a project that is situated within this framework, a framework that requires that current, that demonstrates that current theoretical approaches influence and inform current field work and heritage practice. More specifically, the project, and especially the heritage trail, which I'll concentrate on during this talk, can be seen to merge out of a series of relationships with humans and non-humans in the form of funding bodies, project frameworks, and their associated outputs, project partners, service users, archaeologists, software packages, archaeological sites and landscapes. The Recovery Through Heritage pilot project uh, forms part of the Local Landscape Heroes project, which is part of the CAVLAP Heritage Programme, delivered by Northlight Heritage for the Clyde and Avon Valley Landscape Partnership. It's very complicated. The Clyde and Avon Valley Landscape Partnership has been a major five-year HLF funded project, uh, delivering 70 projects. The CAVLAP Heritage Element uh, specifically funded by Historic Environment Scotland, and we've delivered seven projects over the last five three years. Northlight Heritage is one of ten partners in the Landscape Partnership, which includes those listed above, won't bother reading to you. The Landscape Partnership area is focused on the Clyde and Avon Valleys. Uh, it's a landscape uh, designated as an area out of outstanding natural beauty, just located southeast of Glasgow. Glasgow is just the north west there. Uh, and the project is built around four key themes to conserve the built natural heritage, to increase community participation and landscape connection, to improve access to and learning about the landscape and heritage, to provide new training opportunities in local heritage skills. The partnership is also aligned to the Scottish Government's strategic strategies for like healthier, wealthier, smarter, greener, blah blah blah. The Local Landscape Heroes project celebrates the people that have shaped or been inspired by the Clyde Avon Valleys, from artists to farmers, both historical figures and those that continue to change the landscape around us today. Working with groups that wouldn't normally engage with archaeology or heritage, the aims of the Local Landscape Heroes project was to involve local people in understanding, uh, undertaking archive research on the people and places that relate to local landscape heroes, involve a volunteer programme of field work to identify, record, assess, understand archaeological sites, inform future archaeological strategies, and share, share and celebrate the significance of people in the historic environment. There are two key outcomes for the project, a greater understanding and appreciation of the way people have shaped the character of the landscape, and to broaden intellectual and physical access. And there are two key outputs, an exhibition, and the local landscape news trail, which I'll talk about as well day to day. So as I've highlighted, the key audience in this particular Cavalac project where people and groups that don't normally engage with or access archaeology and heritage. One group that we approached to engage with this project was Phoenix Futures, a charity that supports people with alcohol and drug problems, who run a number of projects, including their Recovery Through Nature program. This is a program that connects people using their services with nature to aid in their recovery work, working as part of a team on practical conservation projects in settings across England and Scotland. Participants in Recovery Through Nature achieved a 41% higher, uh, higher successful recovery completion rate than the national average, with OPH users achieving a 75% higher successful completion rate than the national average. Recovery Through Nature challenges participants in a number of ways, including taking ownership of conservation activities, <coughs> working in the natural environment, and team working in real life work situations. This programme supports long term recovery in a number of ways which, with participants reporting improved mental health and physical health, uh, improved self-esteem and confidence, enhanced belief in their ability to change. So, by aligning, aligning our project with this already successful pro uh, project, we piloted the Recovery Through Heritage programme, with the aim of exploring how archaeology and heritage could be used to help recovery, as well as creating a heritage trail for the Local Landscape Heroes project. After a series of on-site discussions about what we could offer the Phoenix programme, our aims and objectives, the aims and objectives of Phoenix, as well as the discussions surrounding our funder-required outputs, we settled on a programme of work 
which would consist of enhancing the Roman bathhouse at Strathclyde Country Park. A series of workshops which would involve walking across the landscape, identifying sites that would be interesting to, to include in a heritage trail, workshops to carry out trail design, uh, and archive and library sessions to carry out research on local landscape heroes that we would celebrate. What emerged, however, was not quite what we had available planned. Phoenix Futures have been working uh, for a number of years in the area, carrying out general conservation work, as well, uh, as, well as historic on historic environment features particularly around the garden and design landscape of the estate. We have preserved and enhanced sections of the Haha -ha Wall, as you can see here, putting up a notice board so that visitors to the park understand this important landscape feature, as well as cleaning back vegetation other parts of the, in other parts of the estate, so that the original landscape features can be seen more clearly. To Phoenix Futures, the Countryside Rangers, the RSPB, RSPB Wardens, which DL Estate sits, as well as our other nature-focused partners in the Landscape Partnership, this kind of site enhancement is solely seen in the realms of traditional conservation and nature work. However, by focusing on the historic environment as an assemblage of people, places and things, we have the opportunity to refocus traditional understanding of such conservation work and use it as a way to engage new audiences and groups and of people that don't normally engage with heritage. Further, it also allows us to advance wider national archaeological and environmental strategies that focus on not just the preservation and understanding of archaeological sites and records, but also it specifically encourages people, it specifically encourages an archaeology that is for everyone, that's related to the historic environment uh, strategy, Scottish strategy. So as I've said, uh, after discussions with the Ranger Service and Phoenix Futures and uh, the team leaders, it was decided that initial work would focus on enhancing the Roman bathhouse at Strathclyde Country Park. This is a site that was excavated in the late 1970s and moved stone by stone in the early 80s due to the flooding of Strathclyde Loch. The site had been left to decay over the decades and was a favourite spot for underage drinking, general vandalism and was a right soy state when we started the work. Despite this, it was still actively used by local school groups as a place to engage children in learning about the Romans. Over several weeks, we cleared the site of vegetation and rubbish and gathered up all the fallen stones, remortaring a number of them back into the original positions. During this time, we also started to discuss with the service users the idea of the Heritage Trail and that the sites that they felt were important to include in that trail. This involved walking over much of the area, identifying potential sites, some of which required site enhancement work, as well as a session in the local library, introducing the service users to online archaeological research and investigating historical maps, and getting them to think about what the local landscape hero of the element of the trail would be, focusing on the people that made a difference to the landscape. Unfortunately, this particular element of the project was something that, that didn't really work. Uh, we thought that the service users would be more involved in actually doing the research that would go into the heritage trail. It quickly became clear, however, that this was not going to be possible. We had very limited IT skills, some of their reading and writing skills are of a very low level. Many of the service users had been in jail for a number of years, some had never seen a mouse before. That's a bit disingenuous, but you know what I kind of mean. This is perhaps a level of our naivety in our part and a problem in general with our approach to such community focused projects that due to our training as academics, we still engage people in this kind of academic activity. Well, one, of, one or two of the participants did enjoy this, this element of the project, many of them were quite frustrated by the process, and that came across quite verbally, in many ways, in the session. It was left to us, really, to develop that side of the trail, uh, which was uh, something we weren't really planning to do, but because of our funding strategy, the fact that we needed to get these outputs, we ended up having to do it to get it delivered on time, which is not ideal, but this is the nature of it. One element, of course, that worked better in the trail development was as we walked around the landscape, initially focusing on those sites and places the group had enhanced over the years, particularly around VL, but also looking at the many important historical and archaeological sites in the area that we thought would, might be interesting to include in the trail. Towards the end of that process, with the route established, uh, we opened the Roman bathhouse to the public with a, a family <coughs> Roman day with the Antonine Guard coming along in their, their uniforms, uh, it was a really good day. The Phoenix Future guys could talk about what they've done on the site. Uh, the fact loads of families were there. We had targeted hundreds of people. It was, it was a really, really successful day. 
And around this time, uh, our project, my, my project assistant, uh, Rachel, uh, started to, to design the leaflet of the trail and what it would look like. Uh, taking ideas and suggestions from the, from the services themselves, some of whom had engaged in a session about what, how to design of, of the leaflet. I don't actually have any physical copies of the leaflet with me today, but if you want to check out our website, uh, please do. So the reason I wanted to focus on the process we went through in the creation of the Heritage Trail is because it helps me demonstrate quite clearly how the trail in fact emerged out of a, out of a series of relations. The trail emerged gradually out of our relations with the sites that we encountered and worked on them. Well, sorry, before I go into that, we had a successful launch just last week. The Lord Provost of North Hampshire opened the trail for us. Uh, the reason I wanted to focus on that is to talk about how this, this trail really emerged out of the sites that we encountered and worked on them. The landscape as we walked, explored and negotiated it with the service users and the work that they carried out and our knowledge of it as, and expertise as archaeologists. This kind of emergent creative process is something that is supported by new materialist ideas, which sees non-humans as active in the production of relations and not merely as outcomes of them, resisting anthropogenic categorization of dualisms of humans and, and non-humans. As J Jane Bennett suggests, this is not a world of subjects and objects, but one of various materialities constantly engaged in a network of relations. It is a world populated less by individuals than by groupings or assemblages that shift over time. Bennett therefore places a vibrant agency with matter, including with non-humans. We hadn't planned for the trail to go along a particular route, or the particular things that were included in it to be part of the trail at the beginning of the process. Instead, the trail emerged out of walking the different routes and paths, encountering interesting historical places along the way. It could therefore be argued that the paths, the buildings, the sites have a vibrant agency as well. It meant that they were that we were engaged with them as we carried out the process. Their agency affecting our choices, decisions, processes of work, which meant that they were entered into or formed active emerging relationships with each other, forming an assemblage of service users, archaeologists, archaeological sites, paths, trails, etc. Et it was through the specific combination of these emergent relations that the trail materialised in the way it did. Thus, the bathhouse or the paths or the software package worked in conjunction with the service users and us so that the trail emerged in this particular form. The trail therefore emerged out of a specific set of human and non-human relations during the sessions and back in the office. Human and non-human co-producers played a part in the emergence of the trail. The Roman bathhouse, well, I've already said that, sorry, I'll move on. This emergent process is very much at odds with the frameworks set out by our funding bodies and their funding models that many of us work towards. This emergent process is one that sees the, the process itself, as well as project outcomes, as being the most important part of this kind of work. So indeed, the people with drug and alcohol problems are often treated by society in less than positive ways, often as homogenous groups of people that are dangerous wasters, that are, that are not much worth instead of individuals that have some very difficult histories and are as diverse a group of people as are in this room. And it is with some irony that the site chosen for the focus of this Recovery to Heritage programme should be a Roman bathhouse. Roman bathhouses were public spaces, places where citizens shared publicly in bodily processes. They enforced an idea of equality of the body. Instead, it could be, and indeed it can be suggested that the Roman baths themselves are actors <coughs> that enforce this. After removing the clothes, bather, bathers would usually undertake physical and mental exercise. After exercise, bathers would then move through the hot rooms into the cold plunge, while oils were used to cleanse the body. Thus, a visit to the baths entailed both exercise and rejuvenation for both the mind and the body, and was linked to wider concepts of well-being. The baths were regarded as, as restorative and therapeutic, and regular attendance as seen as part of maintaining a rec through and recovering good health. Moreover, for the Romans, the working day started at daybreak and continued until the finish of, of business, and then they would visit the baths for several hours. So the baths were, <coughs> were the baths were situated in a way socially that they marked transitions. So this 
site of social and bodily equality that helps users maintain mental and physical health, where pl places of recovery, well-being and transition, a fitting place to pilot our recovery through Heritage Programme. And before I finish, I have a short video of some of the guys. Uh, if, you if you struggle to understand my accent, uh, <laughs> please bear with me here. They say skills, not skulls. We didn't, we didn't find lots of skulls. My name's Roy and I'm part of the Phoenix Project, which is involved in it's a recovery through nature programme and we've been doing a lot of work, especially in Starflight Park when you go in Bathhouse. It was terribly overgrown, you didn't even know there was a bathhouse there. But after quite a few weeks working on it, it's now pristine. We had a, a, a good opening there, the kids and things and people dressed as Romans. Hello, my name's Derek and I'm a volunteer for Phoenix and I also work down in the bathhouse and I've worked up here well in the Haha. I actually I, walked past the bathhouse on numerous occasions and didn't realise what it was and then uh, I got involved in a project in the of the bathhouse. Well, that was actually moved when, when was that? The 80s. In the, uh, the 80s. Or else it would have been flooded, it would have been in the middle of the Star Lock. So they actually moved it brick by brick to its new site and rebuilt it exactly the way it was. So it's still it's preserved now for a million and a half thousand years. Okay. Well, I've learned some new skills working up here and walking down at the bathhouse and that. I've met some nice countries with them. I have some skills and a lot of work in uh, putting a wee bit back into the communities. I've been damaged when I was younger, so I'm putting a bit back in. Yeah, I've got a lot of new skills as well. I've worked in a team as well, and that's helped, and I've worked myself. Just can't you see any more? It's a great programme, Maroon, because A, it keeps you busy. B, learned a hell of a lot. Um, getting into things like archaeology. Which, if you'd asked me two years ago, I would have went, Did you ask your head? <laughs> but it's really, really interesting. As I say, you just don't realise what's on your back door. And I've said to you, my grandsons, so the, the, the spin off benefits are really, really good. And plus, the people you get to meet, there's got me a lot of interesting people. We actually hang about now, we're an archaeologist there, you go. <laughs> Thanks to the guys, obviously, for helping me. <laughs> <laughs>